Kuwait stands as an example of where the United States and Western powers act decisively and effectively to protect and ultimately reinstate a nation that holds vital interests to their own domestic economies. However, the same rules apply for all nations of the world. Our objectives are clear. Saddam Hussein's forces will leave Kuwait. The legitimate government of Kuwait will be restored to its rightful place. And Kuwait will once again be free. Our goal is not the conquest of Iraq. It is the liberation of Kuwait. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. That calling you and me, every son of liberty. Professor of law for 24 years at the University of Hawaii, John Van Dyke confirms the indisputable authority of international law. The international law is very clear that uh, boundaries have to be respected and that one country cannot uh, cross boundaries. It was an act of aggression that Iraq engaged in against its neighbor Kuwait. The United States was upholding the principle that boundaries are inviolate and, and that uh, aggression should not be uh, rewarded, that aggression must be met with uh, punishment and, and that the world community should work together to prevent aggression and protect small countries against the aggressive action of, of bigger countries. The story of a power that went into the world to protect but not possess, to defend but not to conquer. It is the American story. That I yield to the superior force of the United States of America, whose minister, John L. Stevens, has caused United States troops to be landed at Honolulu. Our objectives are clear. Saddam Hussein's forces will leave Kuwait. Now to avoid any collision of armed forces and perhaps the loss of life, I do this under protest and impelled by said force yield my authority. Our goal is not the conquest of Iraq. It is the liberation of Kuwait. Until such time as the government of the United States shall, upon facts being presented to it, undo the action of its representatives. The legitimate government of Kuwait will be restored to its rightful place, and Kuwait will once again be free. Professor Robert Perkinson of the Department of American Studies at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Because the U.S. is the largest military, political, and cultural force on the planet, it chooses to ignore international law when it sees fit and to enforce international law when it's in its own interests. The most direct example of this is the U.S. support for the new world court. We'll support a world court to prosecute militaries for crimes against humanity and genocide with one important exception. They want to make it clear that under no circumstances ever will anyone from the United States be eligible to, for prosecution. They want to use international law as an instrument of their power and dominion, not as a forum for adjudicating disputes fairly. But there seems to be a lot of preoccupation on, not necessarily in this debate, but just in general on law. But there's a larger law, love your neighbor like you'd like to be loved yourself, and that's where our society must head if we're going to be a peaceful and, ha and, and prosperous society. I, I also believe in the golden rule. Perhaps the most frightening reality of United States control in Hawaii is the presence of an estimated 3,000 nuclear weapons in the state. believe falsely that U.S. presence guarantees security for Hawaii. In reality, U.S. occupation has resulted in these islands and the Kanaka Maoli becoming a prime target for terrorists seeking the ultimate prize.
The detonation of one nuclear device could set off a chain reaction of explosions that could destroy every living thing in the islands. This is a peaceful nation, and I intend to keep the peace. The United States of America. The only nation in the history of the world to use atomic weapons on civilian targets. Twice. Should I be fortunate enough to earn your confidence? The mission of the United States military will be to be prepared and ready to fight and win war. The laws of the natural society of nations are so important to the welfare of every state that if the habit should prevail of treading them underfoot, no nation could hope to protect its existence or its domestic peace. So international law is very clear. No nation could hope to protect its domestic peace and tranquility if it were to allow international laws to be trampled underfoot. Indeed, that has occurred here in Hawaii. And the Hawaiian people and the Kanaka Maoli themselves have known nothing but tyranny under the United States for over a century. The question now becomes, will the nations of the world exercise their sovereignty and their integrity, acknowledge this process of reinstatement, and recognize formally the nation of Hawaii as the Dejere government? If they do not, then they will expose themselves to be nothing more than the lapdogs to their master, the United States. If the United States is allowed to trample justice underfoot here in Hawaii, the nations of the world could never hope to complain as soon as it becomes advantageous for the same United States to trample justice underfoot in their part of the world. Indeed, the fate of the world, the security of the world, may hinge on what happens here in Hawaii.